all right wonderful so um uh, just a quick glimpse on what we are going to talk about uh, it's going to be about our open source cubama uh, which we recently completed the ftr the functional technical review with aws marketplace so we had to adhere to their compliance frameworks and we had to adhere uh, the uh, security benchmarks and hence after completing the entire evaluation our open source project got uh, listed on the marketplace so uh, chirag played a key role uh, chirag uh, represents acunox as part of a solution engineer he p- played a really uh, key role in terms of uh, uh, for, uh, managing the entire checklist tick marks in, in terms of ftr and uh, he'll he'll be explaining about what is cubama number 1 and uh, swiftly we'll delve into how uh, the cubama can be consumed from the aws marketplace so chirag the floor is yours please take it forward yeah thank you sayed for passing yes. the baton yeah let me just share my screen and let me know once it is visible right it is it is correct okay great yeah okay so as sayed mentioned we will be talking about how you can consume cube armor from aws marketplace since we have our presence there and it would be easier for you to maintain these licenses as well right so what i mean by licenses is, licenses is so you might have multiple products from aws marketplace that you are consuming right now and you want to maintain a list of all these products at a single place right so that is why it will be essential for you to cube, use cube armor through the marketplace itself so you have those things mentioned at a single place right so that would be our topic and uh, about myself so i am chirag goel i work as a solution engineer as uh, sayed mentioned and my key roles and responsibilities are related to pre-sales and onboarding customers i recently completed my certified kubernetes admin administrator so i am uh, cka certified as well as i work closely with the core backend team that handles cube armor development processes and maintain maintenance processes as well right so i am well aware of the product and i have feel fe- fair experience of using cube armor on my own as well right so that was about me and uh, yeah so along with the uh, if you have any question along the presentation you can always send them in chat as i see the uh, participants uh, are of less number so i'll be glad to answer your question in real time so you can just raise your hand and i'll try to answer as well right sure chirag so what what is uh, cube armor so i think you guys are well aware of cube armor since we had this uh, uh, webinar and all those uh, in your place as well like in net apps so i'll just explain it briefly so what we do what what cube armor does so it is a runtime security enforcement module so what it actually does it is enforces security policies right and what these security policies can do is it they can block allow or audit certain events and these events can be related to process executions file system access and uh, networking events as well so all these three cases are something that we protect and if you look at from the hackers perspective as well so these are the three activities they leave traces right so what what an attacker would want is they would want to access some sensitive files or they want to execute some virus or a ransomware attack through a process or they would want to do lateral movement within the system to gain a better access to all the events and all those uh, resources right so these are the three key uh, events that needs to get secured and that is what cube armor is doing through enforcing these policies so it is currently a cncf sandbox project so this is something that we developed from scratch and donated it to open source cncf what we aim to do with cube armor is we are aiming to have an extra layer of security that can even protect against zero day attacks right so 
how what what are zero day attacks these are the attacks that doesn't have any kind of signature as of yet they don't have an cve associated with them therefore once the attack has happened only then it can be remediated right so once we analyze some anomalous behavior then we can remediate so what qbarmel will do in that sense is it can create a zero trust policy that will allow only the events necessary for your application to run and block everything else right so in that sense your sensitive files or sensitive uh, processes you can create a policy for and it can be protected right of the bat once the policy is applied so even if the attacker is in the system right they won't be able to access those things so this is the level of security that qbarmer can enforce so along with these zero trust policies the uh, that protect against zero day attacks there is also suite of policies that can harden your workload so these policies are based on different frameworks miter miter fight or nist and cis framework and once you have applied these policies you can be ensured that you are compliant with these uh, security frameworks as well so these would be the hardening policies that will further harden your workload and provide an extra layer of assur- assurance that you are compliant with these uh, security frameworks so that would be what qbarmer does as a whole how it does it is in the back end it is using ebpf and linux security modules to enforce these policies in an inline mitigated fashion so inline mitigation is another key factor for runtime security it has been talked about in various guides from nsa to gartner but there wasn't any real solution that can enforce it right without hampering any kind of workload or without any performance issues so we qbarmer uh, is actually tackling that through linux security modules right so they place a hook on each and every kernel object and identify the kernel calls and if they are found not compliant they will be blocked then and there and it will ensure that no event actually happens without uh, the consent of those uh, qbarmer policy right so in other cases what happens is in post attack mitigation case the attacks ha- happen there are some abnormal behavior some malicious behavior that gets detected by the tool and then it it will either alert the user or kill try to kill that process but in the case of qbarmer it is inline mitigated so those events never actually happen right so that is the key factor and what qbarmer can secure through this technology is cloud containers that would be the containerized workload in kubernetes ecs ec2 instances or it could be any on prem workload as well so on prem in the sense uh, any general workload that is deployed as a process and you can even secure your host as part of uh, the hardening policies and zero trust policies so these are all the cases that we can secure we are building towards iot edge and 5g networks so you can go to 5gsec.com to understand about 5g networks how we are securing that and iot edge is also something that we are looking into since all these places we have a single control plane that can handle the processing and the networking and the file accesses that's why qbarmer is capable of getting into those control planes identifying the actual workload and protecting it through these uh, security policies so that is the basic idea behind it and that is how it's uh, it is providing the runtime security yeah so coming back to the agenda so agenda of this call is to install qbarmer through aws marketplace so for doing that we would require some prerequisites to do and the first and foremost prerequisite is to have a aws cloud account so your subscription of qbarmer will be associated with associated with this cloud account and through the aws marketplace only you can register it and you will get you would need to create an im role for the service account of this uh, product so for qbarmer you would create a service account and that will require actually require an im access so im uh, should im service should be registered with your cloud account 
and the third is either you can have an eks cluster or you can have any managed or unmanaged kubernetes cluster from any other service that could be k3s created by k3s or kubeadm or an managed service like aks or gke so all these kubernetes cluster you can use to install kubearmor and along with these prerequisites we'll be using these tools and binaries to help us facilitate the installation so aws cli is something that will i will use to configure the eks to use in my local system so through aws cli i'll be connecting to the eks cluster and through kubectl command command line i'll be able to access the pods and run uh, operations for using the kubernetes uh, environment right so the eks cluster i'll be using through kubectl command line and helm is something that we'll be using for installation of the kubearmor binaries helm actually helps us to create a single package for different version of kubearmor and maintain a uh, different packages so that will allow us to have an uh, consistent deployment of these uh, of kubearmor and also allow us to manage the versions uh, as well right so helm is the best option for any kind of installation in kubernetes environment and we'll be using eks cutel library to create a service account for our kuban uh, kubearmor deployment right so that it can actually download the containers from the given uh, oci registry or the container registry that we use so these are all the tools and binaries that will i'll be using and showcasing in the demo right yeah so on ahead with the subscription installation process so it will be looking like this i'll be going to the uh, aws marketplace i'll be searching for kubearmor and from scratch i'll be installing kubearmor into my eks cluster so let's get to the uh, actual demonstration and i'll be showing that so let me just share my entire screen so you are able to see my console and all those things yeah so let's get on to the demo yeah so you can go to the aws marketplace you can directly search for cube armor so we have cube armor listed on marketplace as such and we allow different kind of installations to take place what we will be focusing is on the latest version of kubearmor on our eks cluster so that would be our aws managed cluster that we will be using right so once you are have done the subscription you can click on configuration button that will let you to choose what kind of fulfillment you want either you can have container based fulfillment what it means is the different containers for cube armor will be installed separately but since we have a better option that is helm chart where all the containers are packaged in one command in one uh, single rule so that it is easier for you to install right so that this is the purpose of this uh, fulfillment option and to make your life easier only so you'll be using helm chart and after selecting your software version so by default it will be selected to the latest one if you are comfortable with an older version you can select that but it is best practice to select the latest only and you can click on continue to launch now this will take you to the uh, commands that are actually needed for the installation so here i'll be switching to the console and what i have in the console is i have created my eks cluster for kubernetes version 1.27 you can have it created for 1.28 1.26 so all these kubernetes version we do support and i'm accessing this cluster through my wsl command line so here you can see this is the wsl command line that i'm using and through this command aws eks update config i have the kube config configured and i can directly run kubectl commands to access the cluster right so let me just do that uh these are the uh, default pods 
that are configured by AWS themselves so that we have all the uh, Kubernetes related services pre-configured and we can directly use them. So along with this, we will be installing KubeArmor. So we'll be just following the uh, instructions that are present here to do that, right? So the first thing we need to do is create a namespace where the KubeArmor binaries or KubeArmor pods will be deployed. So let's do that. So I'll be using KubeArmor namespace only to install it. You can give your own customized namespace as well. And the second step is to create an IAM service account. So if you closely watch here, all these fields are customizable. You can give your service account any name and you need to provide the namespace that you just created. The cluster name. So what is the cluster name that you are currently using? So this uh, service account will be associated with this cluster. So EKS Cuttle is a library from AWS only and it allows you to create service account across your cluster, right? So that is what it will do. And it will assume the role that you have mentioned here. So it will assume the cluster role that will provide. So this uh, role ARN would be, you can fetch from here, cluster role IAM, cluster IAM role ARN, and it will assume the uh, cluster role. And approving and overriding existing service account that allows us to if, if there are some service service account already created with the same name we can override it with these uh, uh configurations right so i have created a, a customized command for this so that the uh, flow is easier so the, this is the uh, service account name i'll be providing kubearmer namespace i'll be using and the name of my cluster is kubearmer webinar so you can also go back and see here that kubearmer webinar is the cluster name that i'll be using and this is the role attached to that cluster and now i'll just copy this command and paste in my cli and it will create it should create a service account yeah all right, so what, what we need is I am OIDC enabled for creating this account. So this is the uh, library that it is internally used. And this is something that we need to associate and they provide the command in the uh, warning message as well. So we can just go ahead and copy this and we will approve this command. And it will enable the I am OIDC provider. Yeah, so once this is created, I can again give my service account creation command and it will create that service account. So again, this service account is required to fetch the container images for our kubearmor deployments, right? So until and unless this is created, your pods will always be in crash loop back off or Im image pull error state. Right. So once the service account is created, we can go ahead and configure our registry so we'll be fetching the uh, containers container images from our oci registry and ecr so now we can go ahead and con uh, configure our login password for the ecr registry so this would be the command i'll just copy and paste so most of the things you can just follow the uh, on screen instructions and it is fairly easy to install. So, uh, login succeeded. That is the status message we required. And now we'll create a directory to make our lives easier again. So, the, the chart we fetch, the uh, library container images we'll fetch will be present in this chart. And the next command will pull the actual Helm repository and place it in this uh, directory. Yeah. So this will clear any kind of temporary files that were pulled uh, from this particular command. So we'll just give that for clean installation. And finally, we need to give this command to install kubearmor from the Helm repository into the particular namespace that we provide. That would be Q 
cube armor okay must see they provide a specific name great So what this is doing is we are since we are in the AWS MT chart, it is parsing through all the uh, files that are present here, and the Helm will handle the installation of that package. Right. So we'll just need to wait this out, and it will install. Yeah. So the installation is done, and now we can go ahead and see the status of the pods in the QBar one space. So cube cutter get pods minus in cube armor yeah so the main pod is the demon set pod is in uh, init state so let it, it will install in a while right so this will give you a brief idea about how the flow will look like and what are all the resources that need to be configured for installing cube armor through aws marketplace what again what it allows you to do is it will associate the license from qbar from the aws marketplace to your particular installation so that you can manage and use that license in future uh, in any purpose of or case right so this this is the uh, basic idea here going back to the presentation so so yeah this would be the right time to answer any kind of question that you may have so did, did any questions come in the chat i don't think so uh are any questions from any of the participants right now okay so these are some of the questions that are asked frequently like why use him chart to install cube armor so if you have already used cube armor in the past you might know that we have used uh, k8's manifest file to install cube armor previously and why are we moving towards helm charts now so in most cases the k armor cli is an add on to what what the user wants what what you might want and we are trying to eliminate that uh, particular dependency so that you can just install the cube armor related pods using helm chart right so it will package the ver current version of cube armor into one file and it will allow you to manage those things by editing deleting or updating through the helm chart helm uh, library alone right so this this becomes an easier uh, way for you to manage the cube armor versions and uh, cube armor entirely right so this is why we are going towards helm chart and why choose cube armor security for amazon managed kubernetes service right so cube armor is a great tool for security first of all it allows you to monitor all the events that are happening at the runtime in your environment and it allows you to uh, enforce security policy that will do inline mitigation of the attacks or violation of these policies right so both of these uh, features require a heavy toll in the performance if you go with any other tool but kubarma does in a very lightweight fashion since it is using ebpf and lsm's technologies to do that and this is why exactly why the kubarma tool is uh, differentiated in the uh, open source and market as well why specifically amazon managed kubernetes here so we showcase this because if you are an aws user and you are comfortable with using eks and you want to manage different licenses of different products that you are currently using at a single place you can go ahead and subscribe to cube armor from marketplace itself and you will be able to manage the release and all those things through a single button and a very uh, simple flow of installation and upgradation as well right so that is why we recommend if you are using eks or ecs or fargate you can go ahead and subscribe to cube armor from marketplace and use from there and what could be a real world use case for cube armor so how can it actually enhance the security 
so as i said cube armor is meant to protect against even zero day attacks so let's say log 4j happened right so nobody knew what kind of vulnerability it exploited and the sensitive files and all those things were exfiltrated and uh, basically the damage was done in the system right so what cube armor will do in that sense is it can protect those sensitive files those crown jewels that you have in your environment and you do not you don't have to care about anyone getting into the system so it works in a zero trust fashion so even if the attacker is in the system or an unknown person is in the system and they want to get these crown jewels and sensitive file cube armor will actually deny them the access since we'll be creating a policy for those files to be accessed by certain processes only right <clears throat> so that that is what cube armor is capable of and th- this would be a real world use case to be there for any other log 5j or log 6j right so yeah that would be all the questions so i think we have one question in chat so does cube armor support eks optimized ami yes yes cube armor support that and how it will be installed there is by container images only so it may there may not be a hen chart right now for eks optimized ami but we can uh, do the installation can we push cube armor error so yes we can do that so the integration is completely possible through our relay server and we can configure it to push it to cloudwatch or splunk and rsys log as well so these integrations are present in uh, our github repository as well so you can go to cube armor github and see uh, all the uh, integration and how you can do that all right so any other question or any follow up question for these abhishek thanks for asking right <clears throat> so uh, it's been about 30 minutes right it was a superb uh, demonstration chirag thank you so much and uh, uh, just about one or two minutes more uh, for any further questions by the way uh, these are the two pertinent links uh, the first link says install kubama from the aws marketplace where uh, we are actually accepted and listed and the other is we have a detailed step by step document available so that you can actually uh, follow that as well for your uh, organizational purpose so uh, we have a le- very less crowd so ram ajit kadam abhishek please feel free to uh, uh, ask any query if you might be having So apart from open source, mm-hmm. what else extra is offered here? Is just that my is this managed uh, or or what what other mm-hmm. things are available compared to the open source? Okay, uh, apart from open source, huh, Ram? No, no. Uh, what additional things are being offered in this in this sub? Okay. So, um, Chirag, like, uh, uh, why don't you explain uh, from the Kubama.io page itself, like, uh, uh, or maybe from the GitHub page? Just pull the page up and let's let's walk around through the entire Kubama offerings. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, like, I, I, I'm trying to understand the question better. So, are you asking like, apart from the Kubama open source GitHub? is there some extra feature that we are providing in through aws marketplace is is that your question yeah your subscription is not paid sir subscription right or how is it how does it work okay so the subscription is completely free of cost so even if you don't have any kind of payment method enabled in your cloud account then also you can subscribe to cube armor so it is just there to enable you to have a better way of managing that tool right so if you are using eks or a managed cloud service or eks anywhere so in that sense you can uh, use aws marketplace to install cube armor and maintain the versions and the license of cube armor as well so that that is no doubt uh, open source cube armor is open source only and we are providing all the fee- open source features for cube armor through aws marketplace yeah Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining in, uh, spending time late in the evening, post working us. It was really nice to have you all. 
and we look forward to do this on a regular basis and we'll keep you all posted thank you thank you ram ajit kadam udit uh, ashok and everyone yeah thank you chira yeah thank you so much for joining and really appreciate your attendance in this webinar thank you